Hey guys, welcome to Tony's How To's. In this video, I'll show you how to set up OBS. So this is actually pretty easy and a very fast one if you're going to ask me since we'll only be discussing the basic for this one. So before we actually start, first install OBS into your computer. So it's actually pretty easy. You just need to search OBS on Google and you should be able to see the website for it. So let's just open up OBS Studio here. And from here, you just need to download the Windows version here. So if you're using Mac OS or Linux, make sure to install the proper one. But once you've downloaded the, the exit file here and install OBS, then right here, ready to start. So by default, when you actually open up OBS, you'll see the auto configuration wizard for OBS. So it's going to look like something like this. So as you can see, this is optimized for streaming, recording is secondary, but you could just basically click on cancel if you want to exit that, but you could basically access this again via the tool section and auto configuration wizard. So what I mean, you want to cancel that because I'll be showing you the best ways to actually configure your OBS at the moment. So if you're just starting up and just want to have the basic setup, then I'll be showing you how to do that. So if you're starting up and basically just recording videos that in OBS, then we want to actually set up our scenes here. So as you can see, my OBS is already configured to show my desktop screen here. So how do you do that? So there's actually a few things that you should do here. So you first have to add your scenes, then, add you need, then you need to add your sources. And from here, you also have to add your audio. So uh, those are the steps that you need to do. So here in the scene section, you want to add your scene. So let's just click on the plus button here and you want to enter the name for your scene. So for this example, we're just going to name this as test scene. Now here, click on OK. And as you can see right now, it's empty. The reason why it's empty because we haven't added any sources to it. So right now is it actually name, named as scene because we could add multiple things on our scene here. So it means you could add your video or different uh, windows open up in this particular scene. So you could even add your uh, own video like your webcam feed and a lot of other stuff here, even images if you want to. So yeah, so now we want to add our sources. So first thing is we want to add our desktop view. So just click on the plus button here. And as you can see, there's different things that you could add actually. So you have the color source, which actually just add color and to your sources here. So I'll just click on OK, just to give you an example. So if you want to add a blue background, you could go ahead and do that as well. So just click on OK, just an example. Now here we want to add our actual seat scene here or our actual view on our desktop so here just click on display capture and from here you want to add your display capture name here so just click on ok and from here you could choose the desktop screen that you want to use so as you can see i have three screens here so i want to use my primary screen here so just click on here and just click on OK. So we're just going to use the default settings for this one. You don't have to change anything at the moment. So just click on OK. Now once there, you could just basically resize your screen if you want to. As you can see, I could leave out spaces here. It's going to give me my pixels on the spaces beside the screen itself. So if you want to do that. Now here, as you can see, I can reposition it at the lower left. Now, if you want to add other things here as well, so you could add a game capture. So if you're playing any game at the moment, you could go ahead and add that. You could even add images, media sources, even text if you want to. So let's just add a text here, just as an example. So let's just, just say, hey, and from here, you could do text transform, even change the color if you want to make it vertical if you want. And you can even change the opacity and all of other stuff here. You could just basically be creative about this one. So yeah, let's just make this as the default and reposition it here in our screen. Now here, we also have different uh, sections here. You could even group sources if you want to as well. 
And if you want to add your camera, you could do, just choose the video capture device here and just click on a new name and just click on OK. And from here, you'll be able to choose the camera that you have right now. So as you can see, there are different cameras I have right now. So you just basically choose the one that you think is appropriate. And from there, you just basically start and click on OK. So if you want to change a few th few things here, like color space, if you want color range, but these are advanced stuff here. So we could just basically use the default one. So from here, just click on OK. And from here, you could just resize it. So uh, most of the time, cameras are located at the bottom right of your screen. And yeah. So here, once you're satisfied with your scenes and sources here, so we want to change our audio. So here in the audio mixer section, you will see different sections. So we have desktop audio, desktop audio 2, mic, aux, and video capture device. So in here, to change your mic or video capture devices, you just need to click on the three dotted icon here. Just an example, like in my mic, you just need to click on that and you want to click on properties. Now under properties, you could just basically change your audio if to the one that you want to use. So since I'm using the USB condenser microphone here, as you can see, I'm using it at right now. Uh, yeah, you just basically use the camera that you want to use for this one and just click on OK. Now in here we have the desktop audio. So most of the time desktop audio would actually be the one that contains the audio for your um, actual device. So most of the time I make this as a mute because I don't want to have that background noise whenever I start recording. But you can just basically change the audio for this one. So for example, if you don't want to uh, you don't want other people hearing the actual audio from your device. You could just basically mute this one. As you can see, I can mute this and even change the volume if you want. So if you want to minimize the volume, make it louder as well. But yeah, I like to make this in mute. And here we also have the scene transition. So in the scene transition, we could actually edit our transition. So right now I have my fade. So every, every time you change scenes, it's going to show a different transition as you can see. So when we choose fade, you will see a different kind of transition. As you can see, it's going to fade in, fade out. And as well, you could change the duration as well. So this is actually 300 milliseconds. But if you want to increase that, you could go ahead and do that. And from here, if you want to add other transitions, you go ahead and you could also do that. So we have the Luma Wipe, Fade to Color, Stinger, and a bunch of other stuff here. Now, if you want to add your transition, then from here, you see, just need to click on the plus button that you see on Scene Transitions, and you want to choose Stinger. Now, from here, you want to choose the name that you have. And from here, you just need to adjust a few things here. So if you have a video file that you could use for your transitions, so there's different websites there that you could actually use for transitions. You just need to search online. There's a lot of templates that you could choose from. Yeah, but from here, you just need to upload your video file. As you can see, you need to browse it here and basically change the time. And as well, uh, you use the transition points here. As you can see, by default, some transitions here is actually set to 300 ms. So you could basically start with 300 ms if you want to. Yeah, and in here, in the bottom section, you could actually preview your transitions if you want to. And once you're satisfied, just click on OK. But for example, you want to re-edit your transition. Then from here, you just need to choose a transition that you want to edit. So in here, for example, we have Stinger. And you need to just click on the tree dotted icon here that says transition properties. And you want to use properties. Now here, it's going to show the same UI. And from here, you could re-edit your transition. Now, with the parts that we want to edit here, like for example, settings and the quality of the video or streaming in our OBS here. So we want to go to settings and adjust those stuff. So let's go to settings. Now in here, you have the language and team. So if you want to change your team, you could go ahead and do that as well. And yeah, so you could basically change a few things here. But for me, the most important thing here is the section that says output. Now in the output section, you could just basically start editing your 
settings for this one. So uh, I'd like to use a video bitrate for 2500 kbps and as well as 320 audio bitrate. And I like to use video encoder, encoder hardware as well. But if you want to use software, but for me, hardware is going to be a lot faster. So if you have a fast computer, I suggest you use your hardware for this one. And here in the encoder preset, I just retain this as quality. So I want to get the best quality as I can. And also here in the recording, I like to position it somewhere in a specific location I could re readily access this one. So you want to choose the folder where you want to save your videos automatically when you start recording. And here in the recording quality, I want to, I re recently or I uh, most of the time use the indistinguishable quality here because uh, like I said, I like to have uh, as much as quality that I have on my videos. Now you also have the recording format here. So I like to use MP4 for this one. And yeah, and that's about it. So the other track here, I changed this to one. Uh, I don't want to add anything here, but yeah, you could just basically use one for this one. And that's about it. So let's just go to video for this time. And here you have the base canvas resolution and output scale. So I like to use this other solution here, but if you want to increase this one, so the maximum for me is 1920 by 1080. But if you have a higher resolution, you could go ahead and do that. So if you're using, if you have 4K, go ahead and use that. And I also have the FES value here. So I like to retain it at 60. So I think by default, it's going to set be set to 30, but I like to set this to 60 so that the move, movement on the video is actually quite smooth. And here we want to go to advance. Now here in advance, I want to change general here to pro prosperity high and as well as keep the following uh, settings for render and color format as well. And yeah. So here you also have the recording formatting. So if you want to change that, you could go ahead. So by default, it's going to be the year, month, date, hour, minute, and seconds. So it's going to say the time, the time you started recording, that's the time it's going to be recorded here. So if you want to override if file is existing, you go ahead and do that. And also enable the automatic remix to MP4 if you want to. So if you have a different uh, type of file format like we I've shown you an output. So if you have a different file format instead of MP4, then like for example, if you're using QuickTime for this one, you could just basically automatically convert it to MP4. So the reason behind that, because sometimes if you automatically like stop recording or you have any power interruptions, well, M with the MP4 f uh, file format, the file itself would actually not be lost. So you still be able to use that specific fi file if you use the automatic remix, remix to MP4 option here. So for example, you use QuickTime and you, you enable this setting here. So every time it converts to MP4, you'll be able to actually uh, still uses that, use that footage whenever something went wrong, like power interruptions. The video will still be usable. It is actually pretty helpful if you're recording like hours of footage so that you won't lose those hours. Because yeah, honestly, if you're trying to record YouTube videos, sometimes it's going to be, uh, it would take like hours for you to record one video. And yeah, this is the solution for that. So you want to enable the automatically remix to NP4 option here. It's going to be two files on one location, but yeah, you'll be able to still use that footage if something went wrong with your recording. And yeah, that's it. So if you're wondering how you could actually start streaming with OBS, then I would suggest you to please visit our channel. We have a tutorial for starting or creating or starting creating your stream for YouTube. And yeah, so basically you just need to use your stream keys. We'll be showing you how to do that in our video and our channel. So make sure to visit our channel. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you could use the link in the description to subscribe. See you in the next video.